We find it interesting that the forces of evil are putting forth a dual effort. The ethnic and racial differences between individuals and groups are being stressed and agitated, while at the same time you're being forced into a one world of government. This, of course, is not without planning. It is for the purpose of creating chaos and confusion within the psyche. In actuality, this serves our purposes also. It is a great deal easier to create changes from chaos than it is to bring upon it within a stable, static environment. There are a great many planets that are highly developed within adaptation and adoption of the universal laws. If this is such a wonderful state, then the question is why focus the opportunity of transcendence of such magnitude as being hinged upon the process through a planet that is in gross experience of this one? The answer is that this is the chaotic energy that offers the greatest potential for this particular process. That which you call God has not created your dilemma, but it is his creation, and certainly he can participate in the potential that is offered, much to your benefit, we might add. We are offering as many perspectives to this situation as possible so that you might have as much understanding as possible. It's necessary that you rise above the stressful awareness that much suffering is being experienced by many of your fellow human beings that have incarnated upon this planet now. This is so that you can perceive from a level of perception that will allow you to have a God's eye view from which to conceive your plans. The conception of the one world government by the opposition also serves its purpose. Many of the incarnate beings have been put aside the nationalistic views they once had in our thinking in terms of a global inclusiveness. The project plan will be one that will appeal more than those of the USA. Of necessity, it must be a plan of planetary scope, necessarily. Its beginning is focused here in the United States, but the total picture must be of a global intent. There will be a particular intensity of chaos that will be in the pivotal time for change, either for them or for us. Thus, the timing for creation and birthing into the awareness of the plan or dream, as we previously called it critical. In the nebulous, unformed stage of the process, the word dream seems more appropriate in a plan that indicates something already in thought form. This is not yet the case and also keeps it in the mindset of a more playful and creative format. It does not carry the heavy responsibility emphasis for the participating groups is intended to promote a maximum of possibility thinking in the broadest possible ways. In the beginning phases, there must be no thoughts or boundaries. Remember that we are not to consider the actions or reactions of the other side. We are going to be dreaming within a little known possibilities. Therefore, all things are possible. The contingent plans of the other side can only work in their own new reality. You are going to be setting up in a reality that is far outside anything that they've ever considered. It is the level of created that we are striving to encourage you to reach. This is creativity that will supersede and stretch beyond the current reality. Can you do this? Of course. Why do you think we tried out possible contingency plans? These are available for you in the etheric field, not for the intention of you to choose one of them, but merely as beginning points for you to exercise your imaginations. Remember, your imagination is the entry point to the mind of God which is infinite potentiality. The invocation of his presence when two or more are present is true to a degree you limited ones have not yet perceived. Any preconceived ideas individual members of these groups may have considered are to be used only as beginning points. No applicable possibility has yet been conceived. This may challenge some egos in the early stages of participation, but this is a critical time in the education of egos. The observer parts of the third dimensional existence must be encouraged to enter into the imaging process and through this they will experience their true purpose. Even the ego will find joy within this process for in experiencing its true role it shall desire to experience more of this joy. Indeed it is not an entity of separate identity but it is very active aspect of the human experience that has received far too much emphasis within the complex union of soul extension energies. Yet we must credit this distortion with the creation of this planetary opportunity, so from that perspective this activity is contributed in its own unique way. God can turn anything into a purposeful synergy to benefit the whole. More faith on the part of mankind to the reality of this truth would be of great assistance to them in this project. The understanding of how individuals 
experiencing this incarnation fit into the cosmic scheme of things is a little like reading a corporate organization chart. However, this one would be amazingly complex for you to understand in totality, for it does not follow the logical responsibility pattern of heavy at the top. Can you conceive of equality from the top to bottom of something that has no top and no bottom? Stretches the logic of it. Does it not? Does it make any sense? Of course it does when linear sequence is not an essential parameter. How could a group accomplish anything without having sequence being necessary? Quite well, I can assure you. How can things manifest without a beginning or an end? Amazingly, you think it must begin as it appears in the formation of the baby. What appears to be the process in the third dimension begins in the etheric. The unseen part of the process is a complete being and already exists at the moment of conception. For completeness in one dimension, it manifests in your reality. A flower was not brought into manifestation from a plant cell, but was conceived in its wholeness, not from appearance, but also in the process. Will your group be responsible for the conception of the process of what needs to be accomplished to change this earthly dilemma? Why do you think so many etheric beings are present? We are here to help you with the unseen processes needed. Once the skeletal outline is in place in a form that will bring the desired results, then you will not be able to imagine the activities that will take place, all focused towards a splendid moment of creation. Are you being supported through this process? You better believe it. But it all hangs on the initiation by humanity of activity creating its own destiny through changing its perception of the ideal. In fact, because of the chaos and confusion in the creation of an idea. May the energy that awaits the initiation of the process in small part fill your experience. You are much appreciated and all possible support encompasses you today. Be of good cheer as you go about your seemingly mundane tasks. Nothing in the lives of humans shall remain mundane for long. The energies as projected by those that would ensnare the inhabitants of Earth in their plans to change the destiny of this planet moves in ever-tightening circles as they attempt to incorporate the wheels within the wheels that constitute a partial understanding of the cycles of creation. They are oh so careful to check each cog so they're none out of sequence. Linear thought is still the basis of their game, for there is no spiraling towards evolutionary change. Evolution is the term given to change in your language. There is a lack of understanding what the process is. What are they evolving toward? The enslavement of the remaining population is the goal. But for what purpose? A stagnant utopia? What makes them think that the universe could or would support them in that process? To rebel against the process of creation is one possibility, but to maintain themselves outside the focus of creation would incorporate an ever-escalating process within its totality and is doomed to failure. To hijack a planet is one thing. To create an anti-universe is indeed grandiose, for there would be no other way. From where would that kind of energy come? Do they plan to hijack an entire universe? I doubt that what you call God is so impotent as to allow that. Again, I say welcome to the winning side. This may seem impossible to believe in view of the above comments. From one perspective, that kind of arrogance is humorous. Of course, it's not for those experienced the day-to-day flexing of the muscles of their power and viewing it from the basis of the third dimensional experience. To bring a transition in the human consciousness to the largest view possible is necessary for those who would envision this change. Perhaps change is not the best term, for it implies merely readjusting that which already exists. This has been tried before in other opportunities to outwit the adversary. Obviously it didn't work or you would not be facing the situation. This time you must go a step farther in your refusal to play the game according to the rules. You must change your tactics completely so as to cause their plans to be as impotent as they have schemed to make you. You must transcend these plans. Much ado has been made for ascending and for rapture. Well, this indeed shall be our version of that, except Jesus will not do it for you. You must do more than to claim to be a Christian. It will not be necessary to get your hands dirty in the blood of your enemy. Neither shall you be required to turn the other cheek and look away as he does as he wills. For you shall have plans of your own that will employ God's methods that you have until now forgotten. The Armageddon of their vision shall never occur. This shall be an Armageddon, but it shall be played out on a different field, and there shall be no conflict as has been envisioned for you. 
your desire for delivery and your will to thwart these puffed up antagonists of creation shall be guided to fruition among paths of remembering. This shall bring forth the elements of the spiral of evolution that are missing from their carefully laid plans. Fear not, for you have on your side the energies that create solar systems, galaxies, universes, and cosmos. Indeed, all that is. Could you ask for more support? It's not that it has been lacking during the previous opportunities, but the cleverness and the focus of the antagonists have planned carefully to bring this action into plan point of implementation and at the moment of coinciding cycles. This, they believe, the point of vulnerability. Indeed, however, at these points of cycle endings, the Creator has planned opportunity for His holographic fragments to take advantage of the spiral acceleration that is potentially present. Tension is energetically focused towards the process which allows for those who will take advantage of the opportunity. This has been a very simplistic explanation of the unique situation. Indeed, history will be written in the annals of the planet. The pot boils, the steam builds, and the universe holds its breath as the moment approaches. Could the process fail? No, but the degree of advantage taken within the opportunity shall affect all within this universe. Remember that the Creator focus uses all within the flow of ever-moving energy and creation. Chaos is especially pregnant with opportunity for change. It's not to put out pressure on you that this knowledge is being shared but to add to your understanding of the opportunity that is being brought into the situation that appears so hopeless. You must have your eyes open and use your ability to observe and analyze the actions that are taking place about you. The avatars of the past have planted the seeds of understanding that lie dormant within human awareness. It is time to stimulate these seeds into sprouting and growth towards the maturation of the third dimensional experience. Those can accept the stimulation will, and those who cannot shall be given other opportunities. Shall any fragments be destroyed? All fragments of the Creator's awareness must be accounted for. Those aspects that have chosen to experience extreme imbalance are put into a space that is something like exile. It's not like a burning hell is used to frighten you into submission, but a space of separation to consider and to contemplate. Beyond knowing that this experience exists, it is unnecessary to know more, for it is between those and their own inner spirit. Will those that brought this to bear and those that choose not to share the opportunity be judged? Judgment has been a word to conjure up failure and guilt. Release the concept. It is another of the tools to control you, for instead of a closure of the experience, there is a releasing process, a review and a time for the soul, the source of each human focused into experience, to assimilate these experiences into the matrix of its totality. The experiencing focus cannot measure the impact of its life experience upon the matrix of the totality of that which focused it. It is that which focused contemplating itself. It would be self-condemnation for judgment to take place. Self-condemnation does not exist in higher dimensions. There is a world of difference between self-condemnation and self-contemplation. Condemnation and judgment are synonymous. This message is given in love, for it is enlightenment within the experience of communion with the flow of creation. It is intended to bring you to the awareness of being within its flow. It's exactly where you are. A new day begins in the lives of those residing upon this planet. Does this sound beyond imagination? No. The desire for what is entirely different creates a new vibratory opening. This indicates that there have been others who have been contemplating this possibility. The pieces of the puzzle have not been in their proper places before. In order for the chances of success to be at a greater potential, certain sequential events and circumstances must be in pivotal positions. The mass consciousness of the planet has to reach both a particular level of knowledge of the truth and the level of frustration within the feelings of resistance to recognize the changes that are coming upon them. There is present within those with the advantage of media communication, the awareness of the repressive process, but as yet they are in the denial stage. Even that has given way to the suffocating feeling of the inner present that is being psychically repressed. You think of this as being a mind control game that they are playing, but I can tell you it's deeper than that. It's designed to imprison the inner self, which then causes the brain to slow, and the mental sleep process appear to be a symptom. If it were only such a process of stupor at the mind level, then you could have all been drugged into sleep long ago. That is not the object of the process. 
What would that prove to the Creator? What is at stake is the proof of the superiority to the capture and diversion of the soul energy and the enslavement of those particular energy matrix. At a certain point of the negative plan, those who have served them so faithfully will be among the first to be abandoned, for they have already proved their corruptibility. Their ideal slave has a different matrix entirely. If the plan is to continue the game into a larger focus of power, then what use are the sleeping slaves? How then do the planners of this escapade locate the ones of value to them? Would it be the ones that do not fall under the spell of their concerted efforts? Just whom do you think that identifies? Indeed, the stakes are high for each of you personally. Does this description fit? Why else have you been allowed to continue in the business of pointing fingers at who they are and what they are doing? These comments are not to instill fear into you, but to give you the greatest possible understanding of the situation that is now in front of you, indeed upon your plates. You have no place to go except through this experience. This is a short message, but is one to be added to the previous knowledge. Let us consider the leavening of the bread to lift your intent to an even greater focus. Know that all that this is given with the grace of love, for you are more valuable to the light than to them. You are a key to the lock that now holds the totality of this planet in prison. There is within the organization of those with negative intentions for this planet and their contacts with the extraterrestrials masterminding the entirety of this plan raping our Earth a good deal of miscommunication. Each has their separate agenda. Each has plans of reaching their clandestine goals at the expense of the other. Herein lies a vulnerable point in their coordinated effort. It's like two pieces of a puzzle that almost but not quite fit together. Inasmuch as we look at situations in terms of holographic energy composites or matrix pictures, we are able to determine points of vulnerability. So the point of this is that there is not a united effort within their reality of experience. The second weakness in their mythology is that of the feeding upon the negative energy that is created by the competition that is encouraged within their organization. When a weak link or a defection is found or manufactured within the members of their groups, there's almost a feeding frenzy upon that departed energy. It's far more satisfying to them that the same events happen to one of their uninvolved human beings. There's more of their own energy to feed the void of separation that must be maintained in order to continue their path. They do eat up the competition of sporting events. It is this point of clandestine divergence of purpose that is the major object of our attention. This opportunity is just that, our opportunity. Many scenarios to use this to our advantage have been considered. As yet, no exact technique has been established, but several possibilities would accomplish the same exact effect necessary. What we are saying here is though your spearheading action is the key in the lock, there are forces at play here that are stacked up behind the dam that holds back energies that dwarf your ability to imagine them. Do not underestimate the importance of your role, however, for it is the trigger that releases this energy buildup. The forces of creation are hardly impotent. However, they must work within the laws that create and maintain all of creation. The magnitude, which is only the energies that allow the potential for creation, can encompass. It is as if there is a holding of the breath until your free will participation begins a shift in the flow of energies. We, on the one hand, must encourage and guide you in your desire to fulfill your purpose and assist you to be ready to act so that you can participate in the flow of events that will manifest as this flood of energies is released into movement. Thus, we are something like your sports coach, always with our game plan, with having to adjust configure ways of compensating for the fluctuation in your synchronistic interactions, the movements and intentions of the adversary forces, and the free will aspects of manifested experience. Unfortunately, we don't have any recognition for sainted patience in this level of experience. Neither do we have hair to pull out when you surprise us with your personal decisions. The degree of commitment to the changing of the destiny of the planet from how it is now moving is our only organizational drawing power. The personal motive of the participating individuals is the primary element for inclusion and other beginning consideration of choice of contact. Then other elements of character must be considered. Flabbermouse must, of course, be excluded, but they are not likely to be available. The last statement may seem like a bit crude coming from our dimension of allowance. However, it is necessary to make that point clear. There are many levels of information yet to be considered. 
Until the primary contacts and discussions are begun, it will be impossible to go further with a cohesive formation of directions for you. There are no planned shots in the dark, so to speak. Even your contributions to the totality of this change in your reality must fit within the framework of the laws of the universe and creation. The law of attraction is the foundation of all other laws. You shall see this in the coming together of the essential beginning groups and in the final assemble that shall be cornerstone of this new evolution of experience. Within this pregnant combination of consciousness shall this conception and movement into the birthing process be possible. It is often quoted that there are no accidents. However, the free will ingredient within the evolution process certainly contains the seeds of both endless diversity and the leavening of the mix. We come to the end of this portion of our continuing dialogue as the process continues in an accelerated mode. Your days are blessed with synchronicity and healing. Love and light are showered upon you in great amounts in appreciation of your commitment. The time in your way of reckoning is coming into a critical number of days. We prefer to see it as sequential events. But since the knowledge of what these events might be is not available to you, time will have to be your way of being aware. We shall try to coordinate time event correlation with regard to these events that are important for you to be aware of. At the moment, the contact between the parenting groups is the main focus. As things progress, we shall give you such information that is appropriate. The methods of contact between members must be such that no clear pattern is apparent and the language used must be vague. As we mentioned before, certain words must not be used and certainly none consistently. Many of these people have their own pet names for those we often discuss. It would be well to avoid using these, but merely to allude to them, or better yet, not to refer to them at all. This will help to prevent triggering the watchdog systems that monitor you on your regular basis. All systems of contact are monitored. You would do well to get accustomed to that understanding. The more recently a method has come into use, the more easily it is monitored. Unfortunately, wire and tomato soup cans just can't fill the bill. So it is thought and caution that you must use your communication devices. The dilemma of face-to-face -face meetings is that if you meet in a public place, you will be noticed. And if you begin to meet in clandestine ways, you will be noticed. This begins to sound like one of your spy movies, but things are as they are. At this point, of course, there is no problem. But as there begins to be meetings among those of you who are apt members of this project, two and two will begin to make sense to them. The ball must be passed onward and outward with little return contact regarding the project in a repetitive fashion. No one person or group of persons is to shepherd the project. All future meetings for business or personal reasons must purposely exclude any reference whatever to this project. Phone calls, etc. must not be for the purpose of comparing notes. At a certain time, the appropriate group shall come together for one meeting in which the ideas of the future experience of mankind shall be blended together. A simple statement of purpose will arrive at identifying a new genre of experience of the focus of this project. This is the time that the choices of to whom the baton is passed must be carefully contemplated by each person in a small group. Then each is to make their contact with the purpose explained in a face-to-face -face situation where it would be most difficult to be intercepted. Choosing through spur-of-the-moment decisions of appropriate basis is best. Your private offices are probably the worst. As if I pointed out before, you are considered entities with special talents and are so of special interest to them. Do not underestimate your stature in their eyes. We know of no other way to remind you of these parameters without setting the stage like a cloak and dagger movie. Yet, as this is but indeed as a play once upon a small stage of creation, perhaps that is not at all inappropriate. So play your parts well. Just remember that your timing might not be as perfect as Bruce Willis is as in the movies. This will come as perhaps a little late since the first of the meetings have already happened, but that at which is focused into this message has already been made to each of the contacts through other levels of knowing within the unconscious awareness. It shall be known to set the parameters. Other levels of your awareness are being instructed in this process in other ways than this. We are pushing you, but once the process has begun, it shall move more quickly than you imagine for the pressure builds. The understanding of the hell that is planned for each and every human spirit shall cause the focus of a new paradigm to appeal to each contact of the spiritual level to a profound degree. A desire to participate and help with the solution to the planetary dilemma will be like letting go of a long-held breath within the spirit of each. An overwhelming gratefulness shall bring forth the action necessary for it is said God loves a grateful heart. 
This is true, and much can be accomplished through this emotion. It causes an uplifting of the spirit. Certainly, those of you who have been in service through the spreading of the truth to your fellow human beings can use an uplifting. As the acceptance of the future plans for this planet has come into your understanding, the failure of the people to grasp this and their refusal to believe its existence has caused you to face many a discouraging hour, but you have continued on with your spreading of the truth. Isn't this a glorious change of focus? The understanding that at long last there is a way, a plan to take shape, and the forces of creation are indeed here to help. This shall be a pivotal point within each consciousness that will bring forth a change of attitude and will begin to draw on multitudes of awakening people. It's not that the message of truth, what is present and surrounding them, will be different at this stage, but there will be a certain underlying attitude that will be the first trip of a trigger to each listening awareness. It will begin to be discussed and the message will pass from one to another and gathering momentum. No longer will it be limited to those who listen to the talk shows and lectures. Those who have read and informed themselves shall be asked to inform and explain. Faithful tellers of the awful tale, you are the avatars of this time. But in the new paradigm victim, martyrdom has no place. It's not in the plan to allow that pattern to continue. This information is for your consideration. May your experience be filled with synchronicities and loving encounters. When a group consciousness comes together to create the earth experience as a flow of creation, the free will element within the framework was given particular emphasis with the desire to allow the creative element to be given free reign. The hope was that this special emphasis would allow the blossoming of what you might term a utopian experience within the universal laws. It was not contemplated that the opposite would be created within the context of this focus. The joy of abundance was seen as a result of the proper placement of those laws at the center of the experience. Instead, the result was the abundance of materiality became the focus and the concept of the end justifies the means became the framework of the distorted use of the universal laws. If the distorted version of the laws that indeed govern existence in the universe is projected, thought, is all that is known, then how do you create your way through this experience into a new paradigm which is in harmony with the totality of all that does exist in balance? This is the crux of the dilemma. If the earthly focus was created within a group focus, it would seem that a return to that beginning point would be to move toward. Picture as a beginning point a small group of dots coming together into a single larger dot, then this dot expanding outward into a bubble with a focus point in the middle. All of this is within expanding movement. Next, see that bubble is starting to change shape and become an elongated shape which continues to distort into various configurations until it seems to be coming to a bursting point as more and more pressure is focused towards that point. Now in your imagination, how would you return that configuration to a perfect circle? Think back to the way the circle was created in the first place and repeat the process. Isn't that what we've been recommending? You need not be knowing upper dimensional beings to do this, for as you become together with the intention of creating this return to balance, you need but invoke the creative process to receive guidance. Believe us when we say that it is through your concerted intention that this distortion will be brought into balance. It is the mass consciousness that controls the shape of the bubble. It exists within a flowing movement of the thoughts of all. As the negative pressure is purposely pushing the mass consciousness to conform as its distorted thought forms, which are contrary to what supports the existence of the bubble, the mass consciousness begins to react. Certain available connections to the source of each individual's component of mass consciousness begins to enliven, to resonate as to be irritated by this pressure. The awareness of this reaction is causing more pressure to be applied to the message that have been brought to the situation by the place that it is now. Think in terms of the bursting point on a bubble. If this bubble were to react, as would one of your balloons, the point would be to begin to thin and become vulnerable. What if instead this point which consists of thought which thinks would instead thicken and react in ways contrary to the apparent laws of the material world? Remember that thought thinking within itself couldn't accept thought that does not fit within the context of creation. Thought contrary to creation is directional only by focus on what you might think of as requiring great effort. It cannot be released to complete the creation on its own. 
Thus, this process requires that every contingency must be considered and contained within the plan or added to the plan, which would then in turn affect the whole of the plan. Do you think this is possible? When compared to the realm of thought that can think within itself and know every contingency in less than the blink of an eye, this is all thinking thought that has one incredible restriction called the free will of the participants. However, when the free will of the participants comes into residence to an intended purpose, then indeed all the creation breaks loose, so to speak. Is it as simple as that? What about the laws of creation that have been broken by all those within the mass consciousness? Isn't each of them required to repent and give up all their erroneous thinking? Come now, isn't that what experiences are all about? You have forgotten something. Each of you is thought manifested into third dimensional energy. If thought can think within itself, then do you think that it can do that within each individual? It can, but it has one restriction, a free will. However, the desire to move through this experience and return to this planet as a whole to its rightful place within the creation is a free will decision. When an internal boiling point is reached within the consciousness by the pressure being applied, don't you think that there shall be a call within each for help from the Creator? There's a point when there are those who are under the spell of religions that require an intermediary to hear God will bypass that belief and undertake a call within themselves which will awaken the understandings of their two connections. When that reaches a critical level, then that shall join in a new point of focus, be informed at the center of the real circle, or the bubble, of existence, which creation has always existed. It's a matter of identifying with the real bubble and not the one that is on the play of the stage of the mass consciousness. If that's the case, why the big deal? Because the play is a reality for the mass consciousness, and in their free will it is real, and the continued existence of these soul extensions is in danger of extreme damage with reaction that cannot be explained in third dimensional terms. It's a matter of the realization by enough of these extensions that another reality is within their ability to identify and claim. Perhaps your greeting would be, welcome to the winning side, let us identify and claim. The day begins anew as your planet turns on its axis and mankind sleeps on under the influence of the forces of darkness. Their plans seem to be moved in an inexplicable focus of disaster, and only the few faithful ones appear to be awake and recording the movements of doom upon this lovely world of green and blue. The magic of the beauty becomes blurred, and the very home upon which you depend is shutting down around you, and still, if noticed, it's ignored. The final days descend into the abyss while your TV, sports, and sleeping potions drug you figuratively and literally. What now can you few do? to stem the tide of blackness as it deepens more and more quickly. Shall we recount again as you already know and groan and beat upon our breast as did the prophets of old and cry out for God to save us? The millions are already doing that to a creator they think ignores their cries to answer their prayers. It is the perception of the victims that desire rescuing that they ask and cannot receive answers to such prayers. Indeed, only those prayers that ask for empowerment within the framework of creation can be answered. Do you think that the stars stay up in your heavens by casual request of a God being? Indeed not. They are there within the design of balance and mathematical laws that underpin all that is. Man continues in his mindless begging and blocks the very help he desires by being unwilling to participate, except in ways that are contrary to the very laws that support his unhappy existence. The story of the law surrounds him what remains nature. But in his mystery, he blinds himself. The scientific learned ones analyze the components, but not the process of life within the manifested structures of life that surround them. The mental analysis of the mind deludes him into arrogant belief of his superiority over his surroundings rather than his brotherhood and kinship within it. How can those be helped that are becoming more and more blind to the very process within which they exist? The victim cannot be rescued but must pull himself up by his own boost stamps and rescue himself by responsibility from his own rescue. Man is made in the essence of his source, is a tiny hologram of this source. A holograph is a tiny fragment of the whole that has the potentiality of projecting the whole from which it came. Though the concept of the holograph has been encompassed in part, it has not been analyzed with application to the essence of life that is within all self-aware beings. It is a refocusing of this fragment towards its source of existence that determines the degree of totality of the source 
that is brought forth in the known reality of each fragment's experience. If you consider the degree of focus that has brought forth the planet Earth from the fragment of its source, you can begin to get the picture. Look at the magnificence of the human body that the vehicle of your experience here, a vehicle capable of housing a self-awareness to contemplate its source, if it but will. Because of the source's contemplated itself and in doing so fragments itself so they can further contemplate itself through manifestation of experience. Within it, the free will to do this. Since free will is a vehicle for this contemplation then it is manifest within each holograph fragment. This free will allows for all experience within the further enhancement of the self-contemplation process. This is the polarity that enables the recognition of that which serves the contemplation process and that which does not, so that the balance of those allows the completion of each exploration into the return of the fragment originally projected to its source. To follow this process as presented, there is a spiral of understanding as this is contemplated by the mind reading this information or hearing it. Each fragment returns itself to the source that is projected. Thus you are led to understand the framework of the process as you are within, for each of you is like a holographic fragment of the source of all that is in the process of self-contemplation. Ah, panic. You will become nothing as you follow the path of return? Indeed not. With each returning phase towards the source of your entry into experience, your own self-awareness grows and becomes greater and greater until you have the absolute potential to be a total equal within the greater totality of that source that's contemplating itself. Does that boggle your finite mind? Indeed, it should not. It could be the most comforting news that you've ever encountered. Could there ever be a brighter picture of future ever painted? What possible pleasures could ever compete with a future like that? Let me assure you that there are no fleeting pleasures of the body incarnate that can compare with those that await you as fragmentary self-awareness begin to ascend the spiral of experience towards the ultimate goal. The problem is bridging the gulf of misunderstanding that has been set up as a trap by ones that have been caught up in the distorted misuse of the aspect of free will. These pitiful ones have become so caught up as to perceive them as powerful enough to reach not only to equality with the totality of the source of all, but even to reach a place of superiority. Even the distorted psychiatric paradigm of your time would consider this insanity if they could but encompass the scheme in its totality. Within this distorted paradigm, it's necessary to have a distorted replica of the process, a counterpart to that which exists. Humanity is but one building block for this, for they cannot create from a negative potentiality, try as they have, it will not work. So they are left with the process of converting what already exists from what you term positive into opposite, a negative counterpart. Now this is not a recent event in your linear accounting process. How much have they accomplished? So as not to overwhelm you completely, let's say that it has reached a critical stage. To allow it to continue would jeopardize more of manifested experience by the source than is comfortable, enough to bring a focus of the awareness of this awesome totality of source to bring upon the problem. The potentiality of the focus for bringing balance back into the totality of the process as explained above is awesome to contemplate, even with the limits of the third dimensional perception. We have attempted to explain before that there is help available that is powerful, and we have even understood it. However, the key to the release of this awesome force lies within that which has created the situation in the first place, free will. If you are not of exceptional value beyond being the vehicle of change, other means of ending this could be employed. The fragment of which each and every individual fragment of that focus is a portion must be accounted for in order for the balance of all to be maintained. You cannot be simply written off. That would create a flaw that would cause unacceptable repercussions. All fragments must return to the source from which they were focused or projected in order for that source to remain in the balance of wholeness. That is not to say that those that have perpetuated this distorted experience to the extreme will not have some interesting educational experiences, for certainly they shall. Your perception of time does not allow you to contemplate such a process, so do not attempt to do so. It's important that you gather into your awareness the wholeness of the situation so that you can begin to contemplate the understanding that even those of the darkest behavior patterns are valuable to the source that you call God. 
They are part of the totality of the word source implied. Simply telling you that they are all part of all that is has not brought with it any comprehension that encompasses encompasses the necessary understanding and so another approach has to be attempted here. A back to basics lesson in your vernacular. Let's hope that this one has now been accomplished. If not, perhaps the rereading of this will bring it about. It is not that we wish a softening of your attitude towards what is being perpetrated, which would further their negative cause, but that you understand why simply destroying the whole experiment is not an option, or why just messing up their plans is not enough. The source, the big boss, wants it resolved, and who are we to argue? We have this key issue to resolve, so let's get on with it. Around the world there is a greater, greater feeling of unrest. The intuitive aspects of each being awakened to the energy atmosphere of the planet is resonating with the focus of attention placed upon this single planet by the entire galaxy. Your fellow awake and aware cohabitants are certainly noticing what's going on here. This is different from the suffocating direct manipulative energies that are being diffused upon your conscious awareness. The galactic attention is coming through energies too subtle to be picked up by mechanistic methods and used by those of focused dark intent. The opposition must attain its end by employing methods of suppression of the natural expansive movement of thought within manifested form. What is flowing into your mass consciousness from the galaxy that surrounds you is of a natural expansive quality. It is received within the awareness and then follows its expansive nature and arises exponentially outward into conscious awareness as dreams and sleep patterns that are not restful. The governing factor with regard to the receiving of this galactic message is the degree which the inner awareness of each individual being has been suppressed. How slow is the vibratory rate of being? Can it receive the stimulation of the higher and more rapid vibration of this galactic thought form? This is not a message of condolence that is being sent by sympathetic individuals. That is a trick of the lower dark energies, another of their suppression techniques. Rather, this is a focus of stimulation so that the receptors of light which hold each in focus may be returned to greater use. So you begin to see that there are two focus of energy in motion, one a suppression and one a stimulation. We prefer not to use terminology of war here, but it can be noted that the battle for this planet is already underway. Not as depicted with the carnage everywhere being created by both sides, but in claiming and returning of the soul energies. The one side is planning for many, the other for all. Remember, if one tiny unit of energy is truly destroyed, then the totality of all is lost. The source of all that is is expansive in nature. The energy can change form through what appears to be the rise and fall, the birth and death of form, but the energy that is at the very basis of this phenomena is always present. A polarity always exists within the format of this ever-present energy. However, it does not have to be present in the format of what you perceive as evil dark forces. That opposite polarity is another subject. What you must understand is that what appears to be the opposite polarity in the experience of planet Earth is an aberration, a distorted use of the polarity in energy. It is the exception, not the norm. The more clearly that you understand what is just available to you within the context of this situation, the more easily you will be able to maintain the focus of your purpose within energies that are in motion around and through you. It's either to succumb to the energies of suppression in the same moments of your time than to maintain your focus upon the stimulating energies that are acting within you. The battle is not upon the surface of the planet as you've been told, but is within the individual awareness, and it is by definition also within the planetary awareness. It's either understood or misunderstood that within the planetary awareness the minds of humanity in combination are the conscious awareness of the planet itself. Therefore, the transformation of the planet earned by her through her repeated motherhood of evolving civilization hinges upon the transformation of her current resident civilization. You can begin to understand that the unity of this evolvement process brings forth the potential for misuse. This inner coagulation of energetic purpose is organized for the process of transcendence. The polar opposite conceived one world suppression rather than planetary expansive transformation into higher dimension vibratory experience. With the presence of so much heavy energy, thought exchange between planetary inhabitants, mind to mind exchange of conceptual understanding has reached a very low ebb. This has resulted in a proliferation of mechanized communication, each representing the abilities once in common use by you without a manifested device to make it possible. 
With the rapid advance of these technologies or devices to the focus on heavy, slow vibratory manifestation, what appears to be marvelous advancement is indeed quite the opposite. It represents a loss of ability to focus the formative, expansive use of the power of thought inherent with all creation. Slide of mind is at work again, diverting your attention from the potentiality of creating outward from within to the use of the outer mind activity of analysis and manipulation of your manifested reality. The natural flow would be toward the exploration of the inner awareness and manifestation outward into your realities, the greater experiences to be found there. Where do you think the greater people serving ideas come from? Instead, these are being twisted into people suppressing uses right before your eyes while you fail to observe what is at work. All the while, you're watching the show being staged, diverting your attention. So now that fun begins in earnest. You're making your final attempts to reach the inner awareness of as many as possible through the last available use of their technologies, but you're also beginning to join forces with the inner energy stimulation. You too are receiving the stimulation. Indeed, you are like the repeater stations that your radio stations use. You are serving multiple purposes, and you are perfectly aware of doing this within the inner awareness portions of your totality of experience. Trust the process and hold the pole, so to speak. All is far from loss. Welcome to the winning side. Focus and manifest. The glory of your nation fades before your eyes as one by one they are attacked from the inside and out. Each is dependent upon the monetary handouts that require handing over mineral rights and other resources as ransom. The money is siphoned off into secret accounts that returns to the usurpers as the leaders are deposed of or assassinated. The cycle is repeated over and over. People are abandoned by their governments and so must fend for themselves within situations of less and less available necessities and more and more regulations. Not a pretty picture to behold. So what now? Let's, again, consider possibilities that could bring changes to this nightmare situation. Could it be that the forces behind the situation could be creating causes to culminate this planet, suppression of the people of the planet that might involve repercussions that are beyond their ability to control? Could there be small unknown glitches in those plans, which if exploited, could cause outcomes not planned? Indeed, not only possible, but probable. Let's consider the Y2K as just one possibility. If indeed all the technological wonders of the basic power, water, computers, communications, money, travel, etc., all depended on the computers to operate, then so also must be the military and conspiratory communication systems and all other wonderful mechanisms of planned use. All of these were constructed by contract. It is well known that contractors deviate from specifications whenever and wherever it is possible to cut costs. It's entirely possible that at least some of these off-the-shelf computer chips have been used rather than the special designs that were specified. If those substitutions contain the same data problem as those purposely in use for creating a chaotic breakdown of the world as you know it now, how would this affect their plans? Since there must be a synergistic exchange of information within their computer systems, there must well be repercussions with their own separately created system that will cause chaos within chaos. Portions of their plan may deploy, but in order to establish and then maintain complete control, which is their goal, all must proceed according to plan. What if enough of their plan moves into place for the people to realize the truth, but their own internal chaos allows for what we might call meltdown from within? What if the champions of mankind working within may have deliberately placed glitches within their system? Interesting to contemplate. Let's suppose that the above scenario is true. Now we have what might be called a double chaos and exposure enough of the enslavement plan to bring humanity awake. This adds a third layer of chaos. Out of all this chaos, how does the balance tip towards the survival of humanity and planet? There's one more element that must be interjected here. What of those extraterrestrial beings that have been using the power structures they have coached into place? Would the above-mentioned chaos serve their purposes? Could they have sabotaged the plans of their own henchmen in order to eliminate them from the game? Do they have a place in the plan that overlays the ones that are in place? We might say that the plot thickens. However, we could think it any more. Since we are delving into possibilities, when one planet interferes with another to the detriment of the progress of the planet, we have the universal law of attraction at work. Simply stated, what you do unto another shall be done unto you. If you interfere with another planet, then you have given permission for other planetary forces to interact with you. Aha! 
does a thick plot begin to come into clarity? Let us hope that your heart just skipped a beat and real hope has been born within your imagination. We are still left with the dilemma of all that chaos. So let's give a little bit more clarity. Once a planet has been interfered with in an indirect way other than an adversary capacity, the inhabitants of that planet may request help in restoring balance and order. Herein lies the key. Help must be requested and prayer is considered requesting. However, it must be what is called affirmative prayer. Affirmative prayer is entering into the creative mode that is your pattern, made in the likeness and similitude of your creator. Humanity must actually come forth in a group focus, in a harmonious creative mode within the upward spiral of development of individual and planetary involvement. Now, knowing human nature, there will be those when they have recovered from the shock, will immediately want to go back into the place that was within their comfort zone. They will desire to take advantage of the situation to create another situation of power over the people, for indeed the cry will be for new leaders. That will not be involvement. The next level is based on individual responsibility. Unless that is at the basis of the new paradigm, the opportunity of the transcendence of this planet and its inhabitants will be lost. What is important is that of already perceived outline to be the prayer of requesting help needs to be in place to supersede any chances of return of the old. The help you need to bring into this being will then be assured. This help will not be in the military in any ways whatsoever. It will be the love of the Creator manifested in and shall be genuinely welcomed as it shall interact with the inner being that is being forgotten direct connection to the Creator. Love connecting and interacting with love shall bring changes beyond your imagining abilities. It is also appropriate to note that on a planetary level, the planet itself shall have a like experience. May this information offset your concerns about your futures. Welcome to the winning side. Focus and manifest indeed. It is time to focus so that the emphasis can be centered on the pivotal change necessary for the transition of the project from this one phase to the next does not indicate that the first phase is already completed. That part getting information about the activities of the Dark Ones is now in motion. For our point of view and watching energy composites, enough movement is in the waking up phase has taken place to ensure its continuation. There are enough focused on getting the word out for its continued within that momentum. Information is being discussed between people now by those reading and hearing this information. As you know, either by face-to-face -face discussion or through your computer internet chat rooms, the critical ripple effect is beginning. In order to keep the momentum, now that the wake-up call is ringing, it's necessary to prepare the next step. Lest inertia caused by the lack of understanding of what to do next allows for the onslaught of mind-numbing techniques to continue to hold the upper hand. The next step is the choice of the individual to stand forth in determination to detach from the emotion of overwhelm and to observe from a space that is beyond the reach of the control techniques. Seems like a small step, but it's critical for it is the beginning of the separation from the herd, so to speak. It's a step that can be accomplished without the danger that physical resistance would be present. It's something that can be done in safety without being detected by the apparently fearsome entities that are striving for control. It's also critical in the process of each individual becoming aware that there is a connection to the awareness, a part of self that allows for this observation. It triggers a shift within the overstimulated ego function begins the calming of the ego. This will begin to bring it back to its true intended purpose. This in itself is an empowering experience, for it begins the balance of the expression intended in manifested experience. This is a very critical point. By establishing the observation experience, a change in focus begins to happen in a smooth and easy way. How is it best to begin to fulfill your assignment? By purposely practicing the process within yourself, you will begin to guide those who are in contact with you that are waking to the knowledge of what is happening to all around them. There is a fear element very active in their consideration and this information and how it appears it might affect their lives. It's not easy to contemplate all of the marvelous conveniences disappearing from their experience and at the same time wondering how they're going to continue to make a living. It spells total poverty to them and so it is easier to keep shoving it back to the back of their conscious awareness and not consider it. However, 
continues to pop into their thoughts like a bobber on a fishing line, it's appropriate then to suggest to them that they stand back from the problems to begin to consider what possibilities there are to use the situation to their advantage. Opportunities will present themselves through barter, trade, and other methods yet to be created within the chaotic change period. Since it will be difficult to accumulate material wealth, this will free the creative aspect that is inherent in all fragments of the Creator. Creativeness is the keynote of experience at all levels. Otherwise, none of us would ever ask been thought into existence. The key to all of this is asking for help from the focus of thought that brought forth the experience and hold us in it. If it were not for that focus, the basic energy blocks, atoms, molecules, and cells would simply fly apart. It seems difficult to correlate the probability of success for an entire plant with only a few beginning a shift by simply changing their personal perspective and then encouraging a similar change in those in their spheres of influence. But that's how it is to be done. Just as a long journey begins with the first step, so also is a change begun in individual experience. This is especially true when it follows the methodology that is a format for the operations of the laws that govern manifested creation. There must be first exist something so the energy may be attracted to it. In the beginning there was a thought and the thought became flesh, manifest. Following the conceptual thought there must be the desire for it to manifest. To think the thought only does not bring it forth. There must be an emotional desire to provide the fuel for the movement or change of energy from the thought into expression. Through coagulation of attracted energies, manifestation begins. Form includes more than things. It includes situations, circumstances, and stimulation and desire for additional thoughts that support the completion of the desired experience. So within the creative impetus, once the process has began to move towards completion, when the purpose is in harmony with the universal laws, the focus desired must provide freedom within the spiral journey of return to the source for all that it will affect. When this is the underlying purpose, then the harmonic attraction is set into motion with all its subtle power released. It is well to review the basics when a shift in creative focus is to begin in purposeful action of great magnitude. Each and every change in the destiny of this planet is received with great anticipation to the highest and the finest vibratory level of awareness. Those changes that will lead to the establishment of balance and harmony receive input of supporting energy that strengthens and hastens the process. It would be well to acknowledge this with the gratitude as part of your meditations. The attitude of gratitude creates a return flow and allows for a greater exchange of the supporting attentive awareness. Beginning a change within a flow as firmly established as the planned hijacking of the planet is the most difficult aspect of the project of returning this planet to the safety of harmony and balance. It is required considering responses to the recognition of distorted energies into action and further to ferret out its source and purpose. Then that, that understanding had to be put into written and spoken word and ways on to disseminate the information. All of this is to be accomplished within a flow of negative intention that is not only in motion, but also can be compared to a fast-moving river. Yet you few are able to accomplish this seemingly impossible feat through the intent fueled by desire to save your fellow beings and your planet from being exploited. Now, if we can continue the process with that same level of intent and desire to move many things through the information about them to the next step, all shall continue towards the desired end result. Much of step one was accomplished without surface consciousness of where the knowledge and understanding of the situation engulfing humanity would lead. It was the need to inform and awaken so that something could be done. Thoughts of resistance to the original guidelines for continuing the government of the people fueled the process. Unfortunately, the government of the people by the people leads to tyranny in a quick succession through many small steps. Moving beyond into a new paradigm is the next step in the involvement of the conscious humanity. Understanding that the ideal of freedom through personal responsibility offers the true solution is a big jump in perceived reality and would seem more to the beginning few in accepting this theory as being possible and beginning to contemplating. However, the impetus of the alternative of doing nothing during the collapse of the current experiment will supply pressure to consider new alternatives. The lack of sense of personal responsibility within the ideal of elected government entities will bring the realization of its importance as a key to success. The weakest link, muscle, 
must be strengthened by exercise and must be given the opportunity to use in order to accomplish the strengthening. This must be the basis of the way out of the present situation to a new beginning. Birthing this concept is next on the agenda. It will be like putting this large rock into the flow of a fast river in order to divert it into another channel. Once the first rock's in place, then it's time to add the next one so that more water be diverted. However, now there are more available to move the rock. There is a saying in your culture that in order to accomplish any difficult task, it is the willing horse that must be whipped. It's not easy for the compassionate driver, but he knows that it must be done. Indeed, we bless your willing ones in these critical hours of this salvage operation. As you also say, hang in there. It is indeed worth the effort.